What's going on guys? It's Expo Jesse. Today it's going to be a uh, kind of loaded video. So first we're going to start off with a recap of the huge trade today. My best trade definitely in the last four months. Um, I can't remember a trade that went higher than this since like June of last year. So uh, it was an incredible day. But we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about um, the intention of my alerts. And lastly, probably... Um, one of the most important lessons I've learned as a trader. So you'll definitely want to stay tuned till the end. So for the start, we're going to go over this NQ short. So uh, everyone who saw this alert obviously saw it go uh, to, to 30 R. Um, and so we're just going to kind of recap it, what got me in, what kept me in, uh, and how I was able to stay in the whole time, essentially. So um, at 1032, I got in. Uh, you'll see this little vertical line here, just kind of timestamps what uh, what I was seeing before then. So I'll delete this. Uh, we see today it's 10, 10.32, got timestamped there. So uh, the short here, I had a short here with a seven point stop loss. So for those who know how I trade, uh, I use what uh, I like to call a soft stop loss. I use it, a lot of other professional traders that I uh, trade around and, and uh, that I respect use them as well. Um, basically a soft stop loss is where we'll have a level ish that will invalidate um, the trade essentially so the reason we use stop losses not, uh, or soft stop losses is because I'm sure every single person can relate that they've been in a trade that they had a hard stop loss set say it was a limit order set that if it hit this level you're out of the trade it went up wicked, hit that level then shot and hit all your price targets well that's exactly why I don't use um, hard stop losses. I still, I want to be perfectly clear, I still use stop losses. I do not use hard stop losses. Um, it, it is something that that it took me a little bit to be disciplined to get out of trades after it was clear and evident that it hit my stop loss, but it's something that uh, definitely changed my trading for the better. Um, and so sure, using a soft stop loss, I, there's been times where, you know, if I'm, I'm willing to lose a set amount of money, I'll lose a little bit more. But for every one of those trades, there's five or, or 10 trades that I stayed in because I, was, I had a soft stop loss. And because I just know that this market is so institutionally driven, it's no secret. I'm not the only one who knows that. The whole market knows that it's institutionally driven. And so they're just wicking you up grabbing your stop losses, which are going to make you cover your position and either shoot you further up or shoot you further down. So I'm willing to hold through a little bit more drawdown. And, uh, and so, yeah, so my stop loss here was seven points. Um, obviously it never hit that stop loss, so I didn't have to hold through any extra drawdown. Um, but my stop loss was seven points. It actually hung out at that price level for five minutes before eventually shooting down. But let's talk about what I saw. So on the five minute chart, I see a ton of wicks down here at this level where my cursor is out in the middle of the screen. And I see an inside bar, which is a, a bar of consolidation or build up of momentum. And then I saw a two bar that wasn't really impressive. Uh, it closed this imbalance. It, as you can see here, if I zoom in on a five minute chart and then take my little rectangle, rectangular tool and draw it in balance. Remember, low this candle, high this candle. We cover that imbalance even a little bit more right at that candle, and then the next candle opened red. Um, and so it wasn't until this point here, so it was already a two down bar by the time that I uh, was looking for entry, but it was a two down bar here. It, it pretty much shot straight down at 10.30. So then I'm looking to get in, and I got in right here at 95.75. Okay, seven point stop loss, and then I ended up running the entire day and uh, eventually I got stopped out after all these lower highs. So let's talk trade management for a second. So when I'm entering, uh, first of all, I wanna be, I wanna take a little moment to get on a soapbox. And I wanna be crystal clear that these alerts are not buy or sell signals. And I don't say that just because I have to say that. Um, I say that because it took me a while when I, you know, when I was starting to learn trading, I was in these trade rooms with people that were making a lot of money or looked like they were making a lot of money. And it took me a while. You know, the illusion when you see that is that, okay, you know, Expo made uh, 30R today. If I just take his next trade, maybe that one's going to go 30R. And that's not the intention of the, the alerts. The intention of the alert is to use my 
my alert, which is just an alert that I'm going long or short. It's not an alert that's saying, okay, this is the level that I think everybody should get short at. It's saying, I'm going short. Here's my entry. Here's my, my stop loss. That's the trade idea. That's it. There's no buy or sell signal. The intention of the alert is to use it as an indicator. Okay. As soon as you hit buy or sell on your end in your terminal, it is your trade. It's not my trade. Um, and so you have to understand that, you know, while my, my alerts may look, you know, well, this week they look pretty good. Last week they were, you know, man, which we're going to get to at the end of the video, but you have to understand that these trade alerts are not meant to make you money. They're just there to be an indicator of what I'm doing in the market. And, you know, sometimes it makes people money and, and that's on them. I, I like to tell people that it's their trade. It was a great trade that they made. Um, but, but it has to be clear that these are not trade alerts. And so my trade strategy might not work for your trade strategy. When I first started learning, I, wanted, I, I felt like I was on YouTube every night looking up a new strategy, hoping that one would click and be like, oh, that's the best strategy, you know, or this is a huge YouTuber. His strategy must be the best. Let me throw on every EMA I ever know of. Um, and in reality, that doesn't work for my personality. My personality is different than yours. Um, you know, there's people that I trade with who, um, you know, or even relatives who have a different trade strategy. They may be more cynical than I am. I like to win more than I lose, but they're going for the higher risk to reward trades. I'm going for the, the good risk to reward trades, but I want to win more often. Um, so you have to find a trade strategy that works for you. So I want to be crystal clear before I go into how I manage this trade that how I manage this trade is not necessarily indicative of how everybody should manage their trade. That's just how I did it. Uh, and I'm not perfect. I'll show you my win rate later. It's not 100%. Uh, if it was, I, uh, I'd be charging a lot more. So, um, so we'll go on to trade management. So for me, I like to, at this point, I'm up. I've already hit 10R, actually 15R, before I even get a good pullback. This is the one-minute chart. So it moved really quickly. Um, and so what I did was every time I get this, you know, adequate pullback. So I don't add... Um, and this is just talking about moving my stop losses. So let's say this red line is my stop loss I'm moving. I don't necessarily move it on every single lower high that's made. So you have to understand market structure. You're making lower lows and lower highs, or you're making higher highs and higher lows. In this case, we already or moved the market structure, so we're making lower lows and lower highs. So I'm moving my stop loss, not to every lower low, but every lower high, because I know that as soon as we take out that lower high, we have a market structure shift. We are now going from bearish to bullish. I don't want to be in a bullish trend while I am in a bearish position. Uh, very, very simple. So uh, we had a pretty good pullback here. Got back to 1120, uh, or sorry, 11620. And I moved my stop loss to the up uh, in that time. So now I'm saying, okay, if we did something like this, let me get my highlighter. If we did something like this and shot up, I'm out. I don't care. I don't want to be in that trade anymore. It's turning bullish. I'm in a bearish position. I'm out. But instead, we made a lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, and so on and so forth. You get the message. So um, that's just how I managed it. I think I moved it up to, I think the number I remember was 540. Um, so I moved it up to this level here at 557, and then later up to 540, and eventually got stopped out right about here. It actually ran into power hour, but I missed it because my uh, my trade plan said to get out, so I got out. Um, so let's talk trimming. So when I'm entering a position, let's say that my full position size is, um, let's say on first of all, you can trim a billion times on my uh, on any MetaTrader broker because you're buying lots. So a 50 lot position on SPX means I can trim it 5,000 times before I can go 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.01 forever. Um, and so trimming is not an issue. Trade management is the issue. Uh, and like I said before, uh, that's a very personal thing to you that you need to discover for your own trading. For me, uh, on my futures, I'm entering in with, let's say, 10 micros or mini. Uh, and then when I take profit the first time, usually it's a mini, I'm taking one or two minis. And then when I take profit the first time, I'm then switching to micros. And then I'll add on every pullback. So this pullback here, right, we go down here. And this is obviously those numbers are going to change per account. 
I'm going to trade a 50k account differently than I trade a 200k account. So um, it, I'm going to see this lower high, right? We're going to go down, we're going to make a lower low and a lower high. I'm going to add in on this lower high because I know that that's my stop loss. Worst case scenario, or, or you know, I'm going to add somewhere in here. Worst case scenario is I'm going to take this tiny bit of loss, but I'm at that point I'm playing with profits. And so I'm adding in a micro here, or you know, a couple micros actually, and then going down, and then on this pullback I'm scaling, adding in more micros here, going down, scaling here, going down, adding in along the way. So um, like I said, that's just how I manage my trade. You have to find what works for you. If you work better, I'm, there's people that I trade with who are profitable traders who they just would have scaled out as soon as it hit their first price target. And at that point, you're up, you know, a lot R. You have like 15 R. You can now lose 15 trades to make, you know, to break even. Um, they're going to take the whole position. For me, I made a lot more than 15 R because I was able to hold the position. Um, and so it, it's just different, you know, different strategies. So that was the trade um, and how I traded it today. Now we're going to go over... What I think is maybe the most important lesson that I've learned as a trader to this point. And that is that if you want to have the trades like this 1000% SPY or, or this 3000% NQ short, you know, 30R, um, you have to be able, first of all, to step up to the batting plate or whatever, home plate. I'm not a baseball guy, so I don't know. But you have to step up to the plate. Uh, and so, first of all, you have to be able to step up to the plate. You have to have an account. You can't blow your account. Um, I, I say that, and you know, it sounds easy. Everybody's blown an account before. I've blown a lot of accounts. Um, but you have to be able to step up to the plate. You have to take losses. Look at my trade tracker. I take losses. 17% of the time I take losses. Um, and it took me a while to take small losses. And so there's a couple of lessons in here that, that, I, that I learned uh, a, a while ago that has kept me profitable. And first of all, it's that I enter in with less size than my full position. That's that's futures, that's options, that's everything. So say my say my full position on options is, you know, maybe I want to, or sorry, futures is maybe four contracts. I'm going to enter in with one contract. So let's go back to this example today. Uh, and I don't have, let me see. Okay, there we go. I do have a tool for that. So let's go to this brush tool. Let's say I wanted to enter with one position. I'm going to a max of four, okay? So really, I, and then, so I enter with one, and then we push up. I say, okay, trade's still good, entering with another one. Push back down, entering another one. Push back further down into profit, I'm entering with my full position here. If, if we would have gone, so let me go back here. If I would have entered with one contract and we would have shot up, broke my stop loss, I get out of the trade, I now lose with one contract, not four. But when we move into profit, how many contracts do I have? Four. And so a lot of times I, it's, it's, it's impossible for me to say four entries while also getting my four entries. That's why I wait until I'm near or um, at full size before I send an alert is because um, it's, it, it's important to remember that my, when I'm winning, I'm, I'm bigger size than on the ones that I'm losing, especially if I haven't averaged down at all yet. So like I said, if I entered with, in with one contract here and it shot up and broke my stop loss, even if it went above my stop loss, then I'm still in pro or I'm still losing on just one contract and not all four versus, you know, the, the rookie me, the person new to trading would have entered with four contracts, hit a stop loss and lost on four contracts. So that's lesson one for me. Uh, that I learned is that I have to take in and start with with a starter size. I don't care if it's moving a trillion miles an hour, I'm going to miss my entry or what. I'm going to start with my starter position size, which is anywhere from 10 to, to 30% of my total size, usually no bigger than 25%. Um, and, and the second lesson that I learned is I have to be able to average up into a trade. A lot of times, especially in options, uh, you'll only see the, the dollar cost average or the average down. Um, averaging up for me was the best lesson that I ever learned. So if a position's up 20% and I think it's going to go again, 
and it pulls back, and we're talking options, and it pulls back to 10% profit and then starts going again, why would I not add to my already winning trade? I gave an example to, to a guy and talking about this dollar cost averaging, like I think about it like you're betting on a sports team and it's, you know, it's, it's at halftime. Are you going to bet on the losing team or are you going to bet on the team that's already winning? Well, most of the degenerate gamblers that I know would bet on the losing team. Uh, then they're going to lose their money and pay the people who are, are on the, the correct side of the winning team. More times than not, that winning team is going to pull it off, right? And so for me, I like to add into my winners way more than I like to add into my losers. Um, and so that's, a, that's another important lesson is, is dollar cost averaging, not only going down, but going up as well. Uh, and into profits. So let's say again, my full position's four lots or four contracts. Um, if I'm four contracts here, and then we get a pull a pullback. If I haven't trimmed anything, you know, I'm probably not adding another four contracts, but I'm going to be more aggressive trimming on the way down. And then when we get a pullback, maybe I'll go back to full size. Um, and that's just a, a big lesson I learned, and that really uh, it it blew my PNL up. I started making a lot more money than I was losing. And uh, it was all because of that simple change. Now for the uh, the beefy part. Um, let's let's go over last week or this week's numbers. So options so far this week seven for seven or seven for seven. Uh, huge huge couple trades today. Uh, but let's talk about these these five trades. Five trades probably equaled out to about a twenty percent average winner. Uh, five for five, so good, but. Um, my trade plan says I, I trim after 10% at least a little bit and most of the time move my stop loss streak even. There's a couple reasons for that. Uh, might be for another video, but the too long didn't read is uh, I'm never going to let a green position turn red. I don't care if I'm only up 10%. 5% is probably a little too tight. 10% is pretty good. Uh, I'm good with 10%. So I'll take 10% and, and most more times than not, it's going to go up. But this goes back to um, stepping up to the plate. So you have to have good risk management. Um, for me, I, like I said, I like to trim after 10%. Most of the times, if, if I can get up to 20%, I'm going to wait for 20%. But uh, in this case, these two didn't, I mean, it's a good thing I cut them because they were calls and the market flipped. Um, but these, these five didn't really look amazing. But because I was able to step up to the plate, uh, another huge lesson, this is probably the highlight of the video, you have to bat your average. So you have to know that, you know, again, I'm not a baseball guy, so I'm sorry if I'm botching this analogy, but I know that every time I step up to the plate, there's an 83% chance I'm going to lose. That doesn't mean that at, you know, for every 10 trades, I'm going to win eight in a row and lose two. It means that I may go on an 83 win streak and then lose 17 in a row, but I'm playing the statistics. So going here, seven for seven, average winner, 174%. Let's go to, uh, to futures, three for zero, average winner, 1,400%. Now let's look at last week's numbers. First of all, Monday, horrible. But um, this is this is futures, 73% win rate. Risk to reward, still good. Um, you know, my my target win rate is 70%. It does, I mean, on both. I, I overachieve more times than not, but my, my target win rate is 70%. Uh, Risk to reward ratio is almost three. Okay, now let's go to options. Options was a rough week for me. Uh, 14 for nine, and uh, that means I had a win rate of 60%. Still good, average winner to average loser. I uh, still made money on the week. Um, but this doesn't look attractive last week, right? This doesn't look super attractive if you're looking at this week, 100% win rate, 100% win rate. But that's just the way that trading goes. That's the, the ebbs and flows of trading. I know my batting average. I know that if I have a good risk to reward ratio, I'm going to lose, right? 17% of the time, where's my trade tracker? 17% of the time, I'm going to lose. But if I don't step up to the plate and, and take the trades that are in my setup, I'm not gonna win the 83%. So I have to be willing to step up to the plate every day. And if there's a setup, I gotta trade it. And, and because I was able to step up to the plate, because I didn't look at last week and, you know, mope and, and feel sorry for myself. Um, my 2023 combined right now is sitting at a 77% win rate and thir almost 13,000% profit total combined across the board, you know, max percent profit. Um, 
last week didn't look like a 77% win rate, win rate week to me. Um, but this week doesn't look half bad. So, um, you know, it's it, it, the biggest lesson I've learned across my trading career is stepping up and playing my average. And when I went through and when I was learning my, my system and, and forming my system and back testing, spend tons and tons of hours back testing, probably hundreds of hours back testing and looking at charts and, and all that stuff. The, the one thing I didn't take into account was my emotions. I didn't care how I would have felt if, if I lost. So why would I care how I feel now? And so that's part of the emotional trading. You'll never be able to not be an emotional trader. Um, even if you size down to a level that you don't care about, but did it feel good losing? I, I mean, if I took out Monday, it would have been a much better week, but did it feel good losing five trades out of six? Not really. Would I have taken those trades again? Probably. Um, and, and you know, it's, I just played my system and, and I was profitable that week, 60% win rate with a one to one R risk to risk, risk to reward ratio. I was profitable. Didn't feel great. Uh, last week on, on futures, I lost four in the or four in the week. Um, you know, that's pretty rare for me to lose so frequently. Um, but a three risk to reward ratio with a 10 bagger on that, that week as well. I then starting this week off with uh with a thousand percent option or yeah, options play in a, in a 30 bagger on futures i couldn't have done that if i didn't step up to the plate so a uh, little bit of rambling there but i got a lot of messages or a couple messages last week um people dming me about you know the losers and again i want to be clear that that my my trades are not alerts for you to buy or sell and also uh i'm gonna lose it's if you can teach me how to not lose ever, I'll pay you a lot of money. Uh, and so I end with that. If anybody uh, wants to tick me up on that offer and teach me how to never to lose, I'll pay you a lot of money. So hope you guys had a great day. Uh, I'll see everybody tomorrow. Market open. We have unemployment numbers tomorrow. But uh, it's going to be a good week. So I will see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Leave a like if you did. Comment. Let me know what you think. See you guys.